do you think that helps him, Rupper, coming into a situation where Austin Matthews only has one year left on his deal? He's got a no move that kicks in on July 1st, as does Mitch Marner. They've got John Tavares on the books for 11 mil. They don't necessarily have a goaltender yet. I mean, the list yes. is long for this guy in the offseason. Do you think his recent history is, a, is an advantage in any way? I do, and, and I don't want to go back and, and talk about the Calgary Flames, but for what he had to do last year, I think he did a hell of a job of bringing that talent on the back end. I, and we know it didn't work out, but there could be a lot of different things that went into that, right? So I don't, I don't put that on him. He lost talent. Like he, he it didn't. Was it wasn't his, his decision. It was out, it was out, out of, of his, his control, hands. Right? He brought in significant talent. Where at one point, a lot of us thought that they won that deal. It looks a little different now with what Matthew Kachuk is doing. Yeah. But you know what I mean? But so uh, this is this is something I think because of what he's done there, to your point, Jackie, he's got some of these tough decisions. You've got you've got uh, Austin, you've got Willie. Both July 1st get their no trades kicking in one more year than UFA. The, he has navigated this before and got burned by it. So you you probably learn things and and I, I'm sure that has something. You don't want a guy that has no you don't want a guy coming in here as a GM that Never has had to some, deal the, with problems. These are franchise changing mm -hmm. decisions to be made to have zero experience in that department. So I, I would assume that that has something to do with well, it. Well, and he knows the Canadian market. And that's, I think that's yeah. a big thing. I mean, uh, you, the Calgary market is big. Toronto is, well, it's Toronto. But I mean, the biggest. everybody in last July said what an unbelievable job he did. There wasn't a person in hockey yeah. that didn't think yeah. he did the best job in the, in the free agency. And so, I mean, it, like it didn't work. But that's here nor there. He did a tremendous job when he knew he could get nothing for them, yeah. and he went out and he got uh, Hubert Owen Weger. So I mean, I, I think he's the he's the man for the job in Toronto. Yeah. I think he'll do a great job, and he knows how to handle pressure, and he knows how to handle big markets. Well, congratulations uh, to Brad Tree Living. There's going to be a press conference happening tomorrow uh, for those who are wondering. But I'll, I'll ask you guys this: If it was up to you, you know what? would you do if you were taking over as GM in Toronto? What is the most pressing issue? What is the right way to approach these core four players yes. that have run it back for, for quite a few years in a row now? There's, here's a little side note to uh, Trey Levy getting that job. Are you going to side note me? Yeah, I'm going to side note. <laughs> is, let's say he gets in there and he sees something that he wants to change. Sure. Does he have the ability to change it? Because we've seen and we're starting to hear that that wasn't necessarily the case with the former GM. How much control? How much control? How much yeah. actual, if you are convicted in what you want this team to look like, can you carry that out? Because we've seen other teams, we've heard the stories coming out in Pittsburgh, same kind of thing. You had, this is, you, you could do what you want to do, but not, you can't touch this. And, right. and whether you agree or disagree with it, that's a tough spot. And we've heard because you're going to come yeah. in there and you, you want to exercise what you believe in, and you can't do that. You know, and, and we've seen it. I'm sure coaches have been in that decision, well, heard, that, right? that same yeah. situation, 100%. right? Like, like you, you probably go to management and say, "I need this type of player to fit into what make, we're trying make to do." This guy better. Yes, you can't trade him. And yeah, right. right. So it, it's really tough. So if he is able to have that ability, uh, personally, me, I, I just think that you. you it's not the big four. It, that's not the equation for me. But he might not believe that, and he might not be allowed to not uh, to believe that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, so right. Uh, I think that whatever way it is, it's time now to to part ways with at least one of them. There needs to be a change. There needs to be think? a change, I think, with the big four. Well, I mean, you just never know what you can believe, right? Like yeah, I mean, in terms of reports. It, when it reports from Toronto and that where the big four is safe, they're not going to be traded or or uh, Keith is is safe. And I mean, if he comes in, but at the same time, I'm looking, there's only 32 jobs, man. Like, I mean, yeah. if you if somebody offers you the job, I mean, do you wait for another one that's, that's not available yeah. there, especially if you love the job you're doing so much and you get an opportunity to go to Toronto, you sort of say, OK, I'll listen to you for a year. But after a year, yeah, yeah. give me give me uh, the opportunity to do what I want to do. All right. Well, uh, it's certainly going to be a topic of I mean, the Toronto police are always a topic of conversation. But in this case, uh, you know, they've tried with this core four for quite a few and, and, and years. They're right there. And they have one they're, series win. Yes, they're right. One. They're right there. I think they could go. But they and, were close in a few. They they can they can. <laughs> They, they're not. You want to fight? No, but I'm a hey, Toronto guy. Right? I know like, you are. I you want to say positive. I, I got you. This is, I think, where it's at. Is they're close to to doing something. I think that they've gotten closer, but Have next, they? but next year, you might be, and that's why we mentioned Brad Trey. I mean, like 
you can't lose Austin or Willie for nothing. No, a thousand percent. That will derail everything you're doing. So they can run it back with the same group, and this can be an elite team that can go into the playoffs. And they could do. They could do better next year. But I think that the bigger picture, we're looking at the bigger picture. We're not just looking, unless unless everybody's okay with, let's just. No, Austin let, Matthews. One year, let's one year lead. try to win it, and then, you know, I, I don't know. But you can't lose those guys for you nothing. You can't lose Austin Matthews. If they go That's another year, same group, and they don't win anything, then does that group start getting a little long in the tooth? Like, I mean, then. Time goes by quick. Time goes by quick in this, yeah. in, in this league. Yeah. yeah, they also, like, who's their goalie? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a valid point. That's a valid point. And then and then the thing too that with Austin Matthews and I've said this numerous times, he will be the highest paid player in hockey for a couple seasons until Connor signs his deal. And, so that, and so I what think does he that should. do? And I think he should. Doesn't be. that mean so if if you want to sign Austin Matthews to an extension, right? You're going to have to pay him more money, even if it's for a couple of years. That puts you in a, in a tighter cap situation. Don't you have to deal one of those core four? I'm not saying but, necessarily but is, one player deserves it or hasn't been good. I'm just saying the whole philosophy of like these four can get it done and that's all you need. It's just not true. Yeah. It's just no, not true. It, you need better pieces around you. You need more depth on the back end. You need a, a goalie that can steal you. I mean, look at what we're looking at right now in the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'd right? like to have money to go get a goaltender that yes. can steal you a game. But then that's the other part. Or, you need value guys. And, yeah. and you need, let's you just need be honest, you need John, Tavares, John Tavares is not a valued player at this point. He, yeah. He's very good still. He's had a, what, 80, points. 80 points. He's still yeah. very good, he's but for what he player. makes, like, you know, whatever. And, and Willie Nylander is the bargain one you have right now. And I'm not saying his game's perfect. He's got holes in his game like every player year, does. Though. He had a great year. He, put up, he could put up as many points, theoretically, as any of those guys. And, and it was the best player in the playoffs. So yes, and he was the best player. And he was the one that I thought elevated at times. Yep. You know, and it was able to elevate in the playoffs. So the thing for me with Willie Nylander is it'd be tough to lose him because even if he gets paid and goes UFA next year and gets paid nine, nine and a half, that's, that's still good. That... that that's where he should be, and you'd still be significantly less than the other big three. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that, you need value guys. Willie's your value guy, but he's probably the guy that's going to be out the door. So it's mm -hmm. like it's just going to—I don't know—it gets really tough. But Brad's oh. also got other challenges. Like if they've got an awful lot of free agents and UFAs mm -hmm. and RFAs coming, so I mean he—he's got to get all this done, and then comes July 1st or whenever the 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 free July agency first is like one month yeah free way. agency deadline so I mean these are all the guys that are UFAs in Toronto like I mean holy smoke some of the pretty pretty good players when you're talking Luke Shen Michael Bunting Achari they all played great Samsonov had a good year you know I mean and then uh, you know, you've got the the Kerfoots of the world that have that they've had in like so I mean whether you, whether they're good or bad you got to make decisions on them right that, yeah, that, that, no Samsonov, that Samsonov RFA, though, is key because you mentioned about the goaltending, and I'm sure they want to change it to some way. Some way they want to change it. Well, Matt thing. Murray is making like $3 million or someone correct well, me. Can you, imagine millions. If, can you imagine if Sam. If oh, Samsonov, 4.6. See? Oh. It, can you imagine if Samsonov was like a UFA? Which we know was the what if game. Then you have to. Then, then you don't even have a goalie to go with right now. You know, mm -hmm. so they're going to have to pay him. A little. It's not like paying a UFA to come in because this well, is not a team. That's you know what? Be able I mean, that. at the same time, he's not going to take 1.5 no, million. Yeah. This was like, Samsonov I mean, came into this year with like I'm going to prove myself he, he, and you, earn my you, earn my value. Here. You look at his numbers. He's going to say, well, why am why is this guy making this and I'm yeah. making this? And he's got Arbright's too. So I mean, yeah. there's so much going on. He's got a case. Brad that will not be sleeping. You're saying I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Penn's met paper yet. Has it? It's official. Like so. I, I mean, no, he wants this job, but it's it's a lot of work to be done.